Today's show will consist of a new report from Sham Sharanya on what a potential Damian Lillard trade would look like. He reported yesterday that the Miami Heat are willing to send certain assets. We break it down on today's show. Before we get into the Damian Lillard update and on what the Heat would send, it is August, the first day of the new month, and we are now in a sub battle with our Bulls Report channel at 0-0, clean slate. Let's get off to a good start here on August 1st and take down those shitty Chicago Bulls. All right, now let's jump into what Sham Sharanya said, and I just want to be point blank. This is what he had to say a Dame trade framework would look like yesterday on the rally, his show. He said the Heat would offer three to four first-round picks alongside pick swaps, some second-round picks, Tyler Hero would go to a third team, expiring contracts going to Portland, and some young players. Now, he didn't say what type of young players or expiring contracts, but us here at the Heat Report can infer what those people and what those assets would look like. So what does that potential trade look like? What would it be the Miami Heat sending in the total framework of the deal, right? Like we have showed multiple times what a three-team deal for the Miami Heat with the Brooklyn Nets potentially or San Antonio Spurs would look like. And after seeing what Sham Sharanya had to say about the framework, this is what I made it look like in a trade form, right? That he would get Damian Lillard in a 2025 first round pick for Tyler Hero that they sent to Brooklyn. And now this is what the Trailblazers receive. The expiring contract in Kyle Lowry. The two young guys in Jaime Jaquez and Nikola Jovic. He said three to four first round picks. I went with three. I think they'd keep a fourth round pick when you sent, or the fourth first round pick when you're sending Jaime Jaquez Jr. and Nikola Jovic to Portland. Then you send two second round picks that the Heat can offer. That's all they really have. They, uh, they've used those second round picks in trades in the past, so they don't really have any second round picks for the future. And then you're sending off pick swaps in the years that you're not sending first round picks as well. This is a pretty hefty deal for Portland to get. But hey, the Heat get a top 20 player in the league and a top five point guard in the NBA to add to that roster and Damian Lillard. So we're going to break this down more in depth in a second. But I do have to ask you, I know it's a lot. Would you accept this trade? Type A for accept, type D for decline. It is today's pinned comment. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, hey, hey let it play and go answer today's pinned comment. It's a lot. I know that. Hero, Jovic, and Hakez Jr. plus three first round picks. But it's Damian Lillard, guys. Like, the Heat need Dame. I know that the Heat just made the NBA Finals without him, and you might question if the Heat really do actually need Dame time in the 305. But I think they do, because when you think about what happened in the NBA Finals, they lacked so much offense. They only reached 100 points three time or one time, excuse me, in that entire NBA Finals, and that's just sad. That can't happen. So when you look at what the Heat's best assets are, this is what they have to work with. Tyler Hero, Caleb Martin, Jovic, and Hakez. And I know I just mentioned it was a lot to trade, but you're going to probably have to trade three of these guys regardless. Let's just call a spade a spade here. Hero's going to have to go to unlock more first-round picks. It's unfortunate. It'd be nice to keep him, but he is going to have to go to a third team because getting a first-round pick in 25 unlocks an extra two picks that the Heat can send to Portland. Caleb Martin is the one that stays in this potential trade. You've got Nikola Jovic and Hakez, the two first-round picks of the past two seasons. They would likely have to go because when you're keeping Caleb Martin – you're going to have to send those two guys. And if you do end up pulling that trade through that James Tranya mentioned, this is what your Heat roster would look like. You have Dame and Josh Richardson in your backcourt with Bam and Butler manning the wings, and now you have Caleb Martin slotting in at that starting power forward position. I've oftentimes had Nikola Jovic starting at when it comes to that October part of the season, but I think Martin would start if the Heat hold on to him. But one thing I'd like to mention is that this bench would be very, very weak. I mean, Duncan Robinson, Thomas Bryant, and Haywood Highsmith with Kevin Love and Orlando Robinson isn't going to get the job done. They're flat out not good enough of players to be 
on that bench scoring range. So you're going to need a bench scorer, a la Christian Wood comes into play. He would be someone that the Heat would probably target, maybe Kelly Oubre as well, to be that sixth man scoring option that they would need off the bench because you can't rely on your starting lineup to contribute 90% of your points. So you would need to add someone for your bench. Now, I will say it's all fun and games talking about Damian Lillard, but there is one problem. Joe Cronin sucks, and he is not going to deal with the Miami Heat right now. He's not negotiating whatsoever, and it's pretty disappointing what he has done because he's made this very difficult for the Miami Heat to potentially get a deal done for Damian Lillard. And Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald reported this yesterday. Per source, Portland has remained disinclined to engage Heat in serious trade discussions on Lillard. Blazers acting disinterested about dealing him here. One would think Blazers would get serious about this at some point, but they're still not engaging Miami in negotiations. And this is just starting to really, really, really piss me off, man. And I don't know how many times I have to say it, but I know a lot of people are saying the Blazers don't have to negotiate with Miami, and I guess that is technically true. And they're also saying that the reason why they're not negotiating is because Miami is lowballing them because they are bidding against no one but themselves. But I'll tell you this. If you think the Blazers are not negotiating because the Heat aren't sending a real offer, you are delusional. Because how do you think Shams got that report that we just talked about? The Heat never leak anything to the media, but they did it this one time to show the NBA and show the world we are actually willing to send a capable and competent offer to Portland. And they are just not engaging with Miami whatsoever. Joe Cronin is becoming maybe my most hated person in the NBA because that bald head of his is not doing anything to help Miami, which obviously doesn't have to do. But when Dame already wants to leave, you got to do what's best with your team in Portland, and he's not doing it. And he's dragging this out potentially into September when training camp rolls around. And then there's going to be this dark cloud hanging over Portland and Miami, and he's just screwing over two teams. More thoughts on this in a second, but I want you to be honest with me. When will Dame get traded to Miami? Type 1 for August, type 2 for September, which would be in training camp right before the season starts, or type 3 for never. The Blazers win, the bald-headed dude gets his way, and they don't trade Dame to Miami. This deal could already be done if Joe Cronin was willing to negotiate with Miami. He hasn't even sat down with Pat Riley to have a real discussion. And it's starting to really piss me off even more than what I kind of just alluded to a second ago. Because <laughs> Miami and Pat Riley are trying to get this done. They know it's best for both sides. They just work quickly. But Cronin is not cooperating. And I think there are a couple reasons why Cronin won't negotiate. And I think I want to lay them out for you guys right now. Number one reason, his job is on the line, and I think he knows that. Like, right, if he gets fleeced by Miami and he trades away the best player in Portland Trailblazers history for a bag of peanuts, he'll get fired in a year. That's just how it is in the NBA. You don't get a good return on your best player leaving, you will get fired. So I think he wants to play it slow and be safe. Now, I don't think that... And it's probably the best, though, because if he takes it too slow and he takes it into September, this Portland Trailblazers team won't know what direction they're heading in. Are they going to try to compete with Damian Lillard, or are they going to try to let the young guys like Anthony Simon, Shane Sharp, and Scoot Henderson take over? You can't let this bleed into September if you're Joe Cronin in Portland, but you also don't want that to happen if you're Miami because you got the same thing. you got players coming to training camp, and half the roster doesn't even know if they'll be on the team in two weeks. That's just bad mojo heading into the NBA season. Number two reason, does he believe that Damian Lillard can change and will change his mind about wanting to leave Portland? I don't think he will change his mind, but I think Cronin believes he might be able to convince Dame that to, he wants to stay in Portland. But I don't think Dame is going to. And why, you ask? It's because Cronin failed him. He asked him to trade pick number three and 23 to get a veteran to help Damian Lillard win the title in Portland over the next two seasons. Go out and get a free agent like Draymond Green. What did they do? They picked at three. They picked at 23. And all they did in free agency is re-sign Jeremy Grant to an overpay of a contract. 
Cronin did not keep up his end of the bargain to Damian Lillard, and that is why Dame asked out, and that is why Dame will not change his mind. And that takes me to reason number three. Cronin is a bitter, bitter man. He is mad that Damian Lillard spurned him and the Blazers. He is mad that Damian Lillard specifically said, I want to go play for the Miami Heat and the Miami Heat only. And the reason why Cronin won't negotiate, and I think it's the number one reason why, you, you could see these number three, but this one's my number one option, is that he is very mad at Damian Lillard and doesn't want to send him where Dame wants to be, and that is just him being a bitter, bitter man. I'll say this, though. This needs to get done because this bald-headed dude right here, I don't ever want to see him or think about him another day in my life. Honestly, if the deal doesn't happen, I might be happy that way too because I am sick of talking about Joe Cronin and thinking about the irrelevant franchise that is the Portland Trail Blazers. Damian Lillard's their best player of all time. That's sad. Like, Dame is a great player, but if you really do think about it, Damian Lillard. Yes, he was voted a top 75 player of all time a couple years ago. But that being your number one franchise player in history, that's sad, man. And I just don't want to deal with the Trailblazers organization anymore. So give me Damian Lillard or not, but this saga needs to end very, very soon because I am very sick and tired of thinking about Portland. That's going to do it for today's show. If you want more heat analysis, heat jokes, heat memes, I was talking Caleb Martin and what he did to the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals a couple days ago. If you want to see me heat highlights even, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore Roloff. You won't regret it, so go over there and give me a follow.